They're smacking sex, dudes. Let's move you on down the line. I hope that looked as absurd to you as I felt doing it, given that I'm in a landlocked province in Canada. Anyway, in today's episode, we're returning to our original building materials from episode one on water tiles. We're going to start our build with some good old-fashioned aluminum foil. We're going to need about 15 inches or 38 centimeters in length. Next, we want to fold the foil in half lengthways in order to create a crease. Then we fold it over again. Next, we unfold the sheet and we're going to add our PVA glue. We use a PVA water mixture that's about 60% glue and 40% water. We want to create a thin flat layer of glue in order to hold this together. Make sure to get the glue right up to the edges and the corners of the foil. Then we fold the sheet over along the fold line that we already made. Then we repeat the process again for the smaller fold. Now we put some texture into our tin foil by rolling it up and crinkling it around. And then we need to flatten it out again. However, we don't want to make it too flat and remove the texture we just added. Then we want to make sure our light blue and dark blue tissue paper sheets will fit. I cut these ahead of time. Next, just as we have in other videos in the water tile series, we add the tissue paper layers. We start with a thin layer of 60-40 PVA water mixture. The first layer is going to be the dark blue tissue paper. Lightly press the dark blue paper down into the tin foil texture. Next we want to add another thin PVA mixture layer, and again make sure to cover the corners and the edges. We lay the light blue layer over the darker layer and then press the tissue into the texture below. I found this typing motion with my fingers works the best. Next flip the sheet over and glue the edges down just as we did in episode 1 and 2 of our water tiles. Next we're going to use a cardboard paper towel tube to help with our build. This edge is going to be the leading edge of the wave. Now we're going to curl our tin foil rectangle over the tube and then fold it back on itself. The crease where we fold the foil back on itself will be the leading edge of our tidal wave. We use the curve of the paper towel tube in order to get the general shape of the tidal wave we want. You can see here that we have the general shape that we're looking for. Now as all the glue dries, the paper and the tin foil will contract in order to give us the texture we want and the curving shape will become quite rigid. It's important to let this dry at least 8 hours before moving on. Once dry, this is in the shape that we're looking for. However, I didn't put enough glue on the underside in order for it to hold that shape. I can use my trusty glue gun to join these edges together. This is also the best time to shape the wave in any way that you'd like. Now we're going to dry brush our wave. The dry brushing techniques I'm using are the same as those we've used in all our other water videos. We want to keep the white paint only on the highest textures of our wave. We also want to avoid getting paint on the tissue between the wrinkled textures. On the crest of the tidal wave, however, we can allow some of the white paint to get between those textured wrinkles. And here's our wave after the dry brush is done. I suggest taking a look at some photos or video footage of a tidal wave if you want your painting to be more realistic. Now we're going to go to our kitchen and bath caulking just like we did for our medium sized waves in episode 3. We're using the caulking to simulate the white frothy crest of a tidal wave. Think of the woodblock print The Great Wave of Kanagawa by the 19th century Japanese artist Hokusai as an example of the white caps on our build. Now you may find that as a result of adding too much caulking to your tidal wave that it tips over. In this case, I'm going to add a piece of cardboard in order to reinforce the structure. We can simply trace out the shape we need and cut it out. Of course, we want to double check that the shape will fit correctly. Rather than getting fancy, I'll just use some PVA glue. I like to make sure that the glue is evened out by using a brush to spread it around. I want to make sure I get the edges and the corners so they don't separate at the table. Then we simply attach the base to our tidal wave. Now I recommend using two books or heavy objects to press down on both sides of our wave while the glue is drying. The weights will help prevent the cardboard from warping. Once everything is completely dry, we can add a gloss finish to our large tidal wave. 
Make sure to work in a well-ventilated area and follow the product instructions for the best results. I realize these tidal waves are quite stylized and don't really go very far to mimic reality. I'm perfectly fine with that since my goal is to create functional terrain that helps my players imagine the environment their characters are in. Another goal was to create as many tidal waves as I could as quickly and inexpensively as possible. I think this build was completely successful on both accounts. I hope you experiment with the shape and size of these waves and share them with all of us on the GameSmith Facebook page or on Pinterest or Instagram. If you like what we're doing here at the GameSmith, please subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button, or post a comment. Also, please check out our website at thegamesmith.org. We have a few goodies there to keep you entertained until our next video comes out. For our next video, we're going to create a rocky shoreline that you could use as a beach or alongside a river. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.